these candles, which we are eager to carry in praise of your name, so that treading the path of virtue, we may reach that light which never fails, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Gloria in excelsis Deo. Almighty, ever-living God, we humbly implore your majesty that just as your only begotten Son was presented on this day in the temple in the substance of our flesh, so by your grace we may be presented to you with minds made pure through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Thus says the Lord God, Lo, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me. Suddenly there will come to the temple the Lord whom you seek, and the messenger of the covenant whom you desire. Yes, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who will endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like the refiner's fire, or like the fuller's lie. He will sit refining and purifying silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi, refining them like gold or like silver, that they may offer due sacrifice to the Lord. Then the sacrifice of Judah and Jerusalem will please the Lord, as in the days of old, as in the years gone by. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This king of 
The second reading this morning is a reading from a letter written to the Hebrews. Since the children share in blood and flesh, Jesus likewise shared in them, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who through fear of death had been subject to slavery all their lives. Surely he did not help angels, but rather the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every way, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest before God to expiate the sins of the people. Because he himself was tested through what he suffered, he is able to help those who are now being tested. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the days were completed for their purification, according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph took Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate of the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death, before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace, according to your word. For mine eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, 
and the glory of your people, Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the rise and the fall of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted. And you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate a feast day that happens every year on February 2nd, but it only happens every seven years on a Sunday, and that is the Feast of the Presentation of the Lord. In my 28 years, it's only ever happened on Sunday four times. But this feast has been celebrated in the church since the third century. And in many Catholic countries, this marks the official end of the Christmas season. In fact, living in Rome and different places, Christmas nativity scenes and things were oftentimes kept up until the second. Most years, I don't take down my Christmas tree until now because it's not nearly as much fun taking it down. Although it's not left up for religious reasons, it's just because I got busy. But this year I assigned that to Duncan, so it got down a little earlier. But the custom of blessing candles originated in the fact that as we heard in the gospel, Simeon was an old man who had been waiting to die and God had promised him that he would not die until he had seen Christ the Lord. And so as Christian people bring their children to the church to be baptized, in Jesus' times, Jewish parents, and still do, brought their children to the temple to present them to the Lord in fulfillment of the law. And so when Mary and Joseph and Jesus came into the temple, the minute Simeon saw Jesus, he knew then and there that he was the Lord. No one came up and whispered to him, it's the Lord. He knew it in his heart. And then he proclaimed his now famous prayer, Now, Master, let your servant go in peace. Mine eyes have seen the salvation, a light of Gentiles to the nation. Well, those of us who pray the liturgy of the hours, we say that prayer every night at night prayer. But as Simeon saw Jesus was the light of the nations, then so began the custom of blessing candles. And that is what we did at the beginning of Mass. And so I invite you to take a blessed candle home. They'll be on a cart in the back of the church because these, these candles remind us that we are all lights of Christ. So we receive that light at baptism. So don't say we never give you anything. Here you have this lovely, beautiful, red, handmade candle just for you. But uh, it's a love gift, as they would say in the big churches. But at any rate, please do uh, take one. But the newly blessed candles then several years later, centuries later, they decided they would be used on February the 3rd, which is tomorrow, the Feast of St. Blaise. And St. Blaise is the patron saint we know of diseases of the throat because he saved a young boy who was choking. The blessed candles blessed on the presentation were then used to bless throats to invoke the blessing of St. Blaise, which we will do after Mass for those who would like to have their throats blessed. Don't worry, we do not light the candles as we bless them. So the reality is these are some of our beautiful Catholic customs that sometimes, sadly, get overlooked. Now, I personally love this feast. Like I said, in many places, it marks the end of Christmas, 40 days after the birth of Jesus. And when I was in Costa Rica, there were still many Christmas decorations up, nativity scenes, and even the zip line place had a nativity scene right before you went up the zip line. I was glad to see that. 
But Mary and Joseph, they took Jesus to the temple because that's what it was expected. You did that. But seeing the reaction of Simeon and Anna and all that was said, suddenly almost a light bulb went on in Mary and Joseph because they began to realize just how special not only this occasion was, but that how Jesus was to be because they knew that he was to be the Son of God, but they did not know how it was all going to play out. Now, as Catholics, we know we typically bring babies to the church to present them to the Lord and give them the gift of faith in baptism. Well, you know that oftentimes in life, we don't realize till much later what a blessing that gift of faith may be. And it's like we do with many things in life. We take it for granted. We let other things take priority. But we do that not just with faith, but with lots of things. On my 50th birthday, Mrs. Carter and the school kids gave me an iPhone. And I remember at the time thinking and saying to a few people, I will never figure out how to use it. Uh, it's too complicated to work. And frankly, just give me the money. I don't really need that. Well, now I couldn't imagine life without it. Although it's still hard to figure it out sometimes. The other day I had to have two eighth graders help me to, to do something. But a cell phone is fine. But that original cell phone has died and has had to be replaced three times. A gift of faith is way, 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 way more important than anything else. And that gift of faith at baptism, it never dies. In fact, it doesn't even die with this life. It goes on to eternal life. And it's so important. And frankly, other than celebrating Mass, it's my favorite sacrament to celebrate. To give a child the gift of faith is an awesome blessing. Although it's not me giving the faith, it's Jesus. And I'm just the one pouring the water and rubbing the oil and saying the words. Jesus gives the faith, which unlike a cell phone or anything else, it will not break or wear out. But I think oftentimes, like I said, we take that gift of faith for granted so often. We let other things take priorities in our life. But I've, sometimes we are reminded how much it truly means. I'm sure all of us remembered last Sunday and were shocked to hear about the tragic death of NBA All-Star Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna and eight other people in a helicopter accident. And Kobe, we know, was a phenomenal basketball player. He had so many successes in his life, but he also had some dark times. He was raised a Catholic in Philadelphia, and it was at that darkest moment that he realized what a blessing his faith was. And he turned back to his faith that he admitted he had taken for granted. And so he is quoted as saying, the one thing that helped me during that dark time was talking to a priest. I grew up Catholic. My kids are Catholic. The priest assured me I was going to be okay. God is not going to give you anything you cannot handle. It's in his hands now. And Kobe said that was a turning point in his life. It's easy for all of us to forget that gift of faith and think, hey, we don't need God. We can solve these problems all by ourselves. But we can't. We need God every moment of our lives. At the presentation, Mary and Joseph learned that Jesus was something truly extraordinary. He is given to us at baptism. And it's not just a rite of passage or a ceremony to go through, but a gift that lasts forever, even to eternity. But it's up to us to use it and to live that gift of faith. And now this weekend, we have been asked to read a letter uh, from Archbishop Coakley. Dear brothers and sisters, this year I chose You Are the Light of the World as our theme for the 2020 Annual Catholic Appeal to highlight the tremendous faith-filled efforts we have made this past year and to celebrate the potential of each one of us to grow in our love of Jesus Christ. Through our churches, schools, and ministries across the archdiocese, we act every day to create and strengthen opportunities for people to grow in relationship with Jesus Christ. This is indeed no small task. It is only possible because we come together prayerfully, work toward our common goal with God blessing our efforts. I'm particularly excited about we, where we are, the church in central and western Oklahoma. The Catholic population is growing. We are developing a stronger culture of evangelization and discipleship, and people are embracing the opportunities God gives them to build up his kingdom. 
Please allow me to thank all in the community for the implementation of the One Church Mini Disciples Capital Campaign. The successful conclusion of our first Archdiocesan Capital Campaign this past summer will allow us to build the Blessed Stanley Rother Shrine, begin endowments to help fund long-term faith formation, and provide resources for local parishes. The extraordinary response to this campaign has been overwhelming. I am so grateful for the sacrifice and commitment of so many who helped make it such a success. As we move forward as a community, we now turn our focus toward the implementation of a new pastoral plan, Vision 2030. The plan includes focusing on five unique priorities of ministry, discipleship, marriage and family life, education, young people, and diversity. These priorities are seen through the lenses of the liturgy, through the love of God, and through Catholic social teaching, the love of neighbor. The annual Catholic appeal is the mechanism we use as an archdiocese to raise the funds needed to implement the goals of building a culture in conversion and discipleship by creating new ministry initiatives to strengthen marriages and family life and by addressing the unique needs of the young. But there is a cost to implementing new ministry, and I'm grateful for your gifts to help in this. This year, through the annual Catholic appeal, we seek to raise $3.6 million to fund ministries that include education of seminarians, Christian leadership development, marriage and family support, healing ministries, defending the value of human life, and finding better and new ways to strengthen formation of children, adolescents, and young adults. I ask you to prayerfully consider what God is calling you to give this year to the annual Catholic appeal. When we come together, God blesses our selfless actions and uses this simple act to things we never imagined possible. You are a light of the world. Let your light shine so they may see your good works. Thank you for supporting the efforts of the Archdiocese through your generosity. And we will be hearing more about this in the days to come. For the mission of the church, that the light of Christ may shine through our lives and reveal God to all who are searching for meaning or purpose. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the light of wisdom for our church leaders, that their teaching and actions may lead others to a deeper relationship with Christ and bind the church in greater unity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the light of justice, that the burden and pain of those who suffer unjustly may be lifted, 
and that God's saving mercy may free them to live life more fully. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, that God's healing love will restore them, and that God will give strength and inspiration to all who are working to combat the new viruses that are impacting the human family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our senior citizens, that God will give them health and strength so that we may learn from them and be inspired by them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the success of the annual Catholic appeal, that the Holy Spirit will move us to a deep commitment to help others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Linda Moore and Miletus Pozo, and for all who grieve for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silent prayer, let us now mention our own special intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we ask you to hear these prayers and those that we hold in our hearts. Continue to show us your mercy and your love, and we ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of this holy church. May the offering made with exultation by your church be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray. For you will that your only begotten Son be offered to you for the life of the world as the Lamb without blemish, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for your co-eternal Son was presented on this day in the temple and revealed by the Spirit as the glory of Israel and the light of the nations. And so we too go forth, rejoicing to encounter your salvation, and with the angels and the saints, praise you as without end we acclaim. Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all those who, holding on to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, 
all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that of all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Remember especially Bob Pollock. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
due to uh, the funeral of Linda Moore uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, adoration will begin at noon. Also, since many people will be going to the funeral, uh, the senior adult luncheon for tomorrow has been canceled. Uh, the Knights of Columbus Valentine's Charity Dinner is on February the 8th. Uh, this is the last opportunity to purchase tickets, um, and you may do that after Mass down in the foyer. This Friday, we will have a very special uh, concert. Uh, one of the world's greatest organists, other than Edwin, of course, uh, Mr. Daniel Roth, who's the organist at the Basilica of Saint-Sulpice in Paris and has did many, many, many recordings and records. He will be here at 7 o'clock. Uh, to have a concert on our organ. So it's a great honor to have Mr. Roth here, so I hope many of you will come. Next week, in honor of World Day of the Prayer for the Sick, uh, we will have the anointing of the sick at all Masses. Please don't forget, uh, the blood drive is on February the 10th, and uh, we need more people to sign up. Please take a blessed candle, which will be located in the back on the cart. Uh, please take one after Mass. Also, if you would like <clears throat> your throat blessed for the Feast of St. Blaise, after the procession goes out, I will remain up here, and then if you'll just line up along the rail here, you don't have to kneel, but just line up, then I will come along and bless the throats. And now, uh, John Snodgrass has a special announcement. Thank you, Father. I'm John Snodgrass. I've been a member of Christ the King Parish for 27 years. Most of the time, I would consider myself a, a lukewarm Catholic, but the Lord doesn't want us to be lukewarm. He wants us to be more fully engaged as a member of our Catholic community. I attended my first Acts Retreat about two years ago. Acts stands for Adoration, Community, Theology, and Service. It was a, the first Acts Retreat put on at Christ the King, and no one recruited me, but I felt something was missing in my faith life, so I really feel like it was the Holy Spirit who asked me to come, and I said yes. Since the retreat, I have been much more active in our community and had a much stronger faith life. I wouldn't say that I'm on fire, but there is some smoke, and they do say where there's smoke, there probably is fire. <laughs> Most of you have been asked, or many of you have been asked, some many times, multiple times, to attend this retreat. I can only encourage you to say yes. It is the Holy Spirit who is actually asking you to attend to the men who you talk to. And it is the father of lies who helps you come up with excuses as a reason to not attend. So don't let the evil one keep you from coming. It may be time for you to say, here I am, Lord. Now, the men's retreat is the first weekend in March, March 8, 5 through 8. It starts after work on Thursday and ends at 12.15 Mass on Sunday. The women's retreat is April 30th through May 3rd, and it's held at, um, we leave from, from here on a bus and go to uh, Camp Guadalupe. So there will be some men and maybe some women out uh, when you're leaving with brochures and cards. So again, I can only encourage you. It, it made a tremendous difference in my life. I have some really good new friends, many of which I see here in the congregation today, and I just encourage you to say yes. Thank you. Thank you, John. It has, the people who go really have gotten a lot out of it, so I hope many, many of you will consider going on uh, the retreat. And now let us pray the prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Blessed Stanley Rother. Let us pray. By these holy gifts which we have received, O Lord, bring your grace to perfection within us, and as you fulfilled Simeon's expectation that he would not see death, 
until he had been privileged to welcome the Christ. So may we, going forth to meet the Lord, obtain the gift of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.